Hello there, it's Dr. Omide again. In this series, we are going to discuss the anatomy of the leg. Yeah. So, you need to begin by understanding the bones that are in the legs, as the tibia and the fibula. The tibia is the main weight-bearing bone. Okay. So we have the lateral and medial epicondyles. You have the intercondylar eminences. That's the tibial tuberosity. The head of the fibula, the neck. That's the proximal and distal tibial fibula joint, which are syndesmotic um, type of joints, fibrous joints. That's the shaft of the fibula. That's the lateral malleoli of the fibula and the medial malleoli of the tibia. That's the articular surface. So basically, the tibia is a triangular bone that um, has a medial surface that is usually subcutaneous. And then you have a lateral surface here and a posterior surface. So it has three surfaces, medial, lateral, and posterior. Between tibia and fibula, usually we have an interosseous membrane, which is a modification of fascia uh, crura. Fascia crura is fascia of the leg. Remember, fascia lata is fascia of the thigh. So what are the modifications of fascia crura? We've said the intermuscular septum, which helps to compartmentalize the leg into three compartments, anterior, posterior, and lateral compartments. Then we also have the retinacula. Retinacula are um, connective tissue that help to prevent the bow stringing of tendons. So like this one we have, this is your retinacula here. Okay, so this is your extensor retinacula, usually Y-shaped. It has a superior and inferior uh, uh, portions with the bands. And this prevents the bow stringing of, or rather holds the tendons in place. And then on this side you have peroneal retinacula. So you have a superior and inferior on the, on the medial aspect of the leg. You have a flexor retinacula that holds the flexor um, tendons around the tarsal tunnel. So um, superficially, what do we see in the leg? We have, of course, um, superficial veins and nerves. And for the nerves, we have the medial pseudocutaneous nerve, lateral pseudocutaneous nerve, okay? And we, these are coming from tibial nerve, will give medial sural, common peroneal will give lateral sural. Remember, tibial and common peroneal are from sciatic nerve at the upper border of popliteal fossa. This is a sural communicating, helps to communicate medial and lateral sural nerve. So these are the um, cutaneous uh, nerves of the leg. Okay, so this just shows you that this portion is by the sural nerve, uh, medial cutaneous, lateral cutaneous, and the sural nerve itself. Okay. So the saphenous vessels, we have discussed how the great saphenous is from the dorsal venous arc medially and the medial marginal vein. Uh, fingers breath anterior to the medial malleola ascends on the uh, medial aspect of the leg. Hands breath posterior medial to the patella, then ascends um, anterior medially at the thigh to terminate at the cribriform fascia, uh, piercing cribriform fascia to enter the femoral vein. While small saphenous vein, on the dorsal venous arc laterally passes posterior to the lateral malleola and posterior aspect of the leg, it pierces popliteal fascia to empty into the popliteal vein. So what are the compartments of the leg? We have anterior compartment, posterior compartment, which is divided into a superficial and deep uh, compartments, and the third compartment, we have the lateral compartment. So these compartments are usually formed by um, the anterior and posterior intermuscular septa, the interosseous membrane, as well as the fascia crura. So you can see that the compartments have um, walls that are unyielding to pressure, and that ex will explain the um, compartment syndrome that we usually talk about, the symptoms that are caused by lesions within the compartments because the compartments are formed by walls that are unyielding to, to pressure. So you have the intermuscular septum, interosseous membrane, and fascia crura, as well as the bones. They help to compartmentalize the leg. So these are the compartments. This is your tibia. This is your fibula. So anything anterior to that forms your anterior compartment. Anything posterior, in blue and red, you have your posterior compartments, which are divided into superficial and deep. And then this is your lateral compartment towards the fibula. So you can be asked to draw a cross-section of the leg to show the structures within each compartment. So if this is posteriorly, this is your sural nerve and small saphenous vein. This is your great saphenous vein here. These are your extensors. These are your flexes, soleus muscle, medial and lateral bellies of gastrocnemius, peroneus longus and peroneus brevis within the lateral compartment. What is compartment syndrome? Compartment syndrome are 
um, a, a constellation of um, symptoms that are caused by um, space occupying lesions within compartments. And these are uh, um, as a result of um, these space occupying lesions, whether bleeding or tumor, compressing the contents of the compartments because the walls of the compartments are unyielding to pressure. The intermuscular septum, interosseous membrane, fascia cura, they do not have space for expansion. So if you bleed within a compartment, you compress nerves. When you compress nerves, you get pain, you get paresthesia, pins and needle sensation, you get paralysis of the muscles. And when you compress vessels, the distal portion will be pale and you lose the pulse. So you have the five Ps of compartment syndrome, pale, pallor, pulselessness, paresthesia, and paralysis. So we tend to see compartment syndrome in the forearm and in the leg. So the anterior compartment of the leg is mainly formed by extensor muscles or muscles that cause dociflexion at the ankle. So the extensor or dociflexor compartment. What are the boundaries? The lateral surface of the, of the tibia, the medial surface of the fibula with the anterior intermuscular septum, the interosseous membrane and fascia crura. So those are the boundaries of the anterior compartment. And within the anterior compartment, we have the extensor retinacular that has a superior and inferior part forming a Y shape to prevent both stringing of the tendons. So this is your Y shaped um, extensor retinacular. So you have your superior and the inferior portion. So which muscles are found in the dociflexor compartment? Tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus that will extend the digits, extensor halosius longus extends the big toe, and peroneus tarsus. So what is the action of the muscles in the anterior compartment? They cause dociflexion at the ankle, and they also extend the toes. The nerve of the anterior compartment is the deep peroneal branch of common peroneal nerve, and the artery is anterior tibial from popliteal artery. So this is your tibialis anterior. It comes anteriorly this way. This is your extensor digitorum longus to extend the digits. You have extensor halusius that extends the, the, the big toe. So those are the muscles in there. We also have peroneus tertius muscles in the anterior compartment. And then this is your sciatic dividing into common peroneal and tibial nerve. And common peroneal divides into deep that will go into the anterior compartment okay that's deep and superficial that remains in the lateral compartment tibial continues downwards in, within the posterior compartment of the leg and at the tarsal tunnel it divides into medial and lateral plantar nerves so these are the vessels within the the leg remember your femoral artery that will give profunda femoris medial and lateral circumflex it enters superficial femoral enters the ductal canal at hiatus becomes popliteal Popliteal participates in the genicular anastomosis and uh, on the lower border of the muscle popliteus, the popliteal um, artery divides into anterior tibial to the anterior compartment of the leg and posterior tibial in the posterior compartment of the leg. Posterior tibial usually gives peroneal artery that goes to the lateral compartment of the leg. And then um, you have the deep vessels correspond and you have your superficial great saphenous and small saphenous rings. So we go to the lateral compartment of the leg. What are the boundaries? It's formed by the lateral surface of the fibula, anterior and posterior intermuscular septa, and the fascia crura. So in this side, we also have the superior and inferior fibula retinacula. These muscles in the lateral compartment, they cause evasion and inversion. Remember, anterior compartment are causing dociflexion. So these ones cause evasion and inversion. So these are the um, superior and inferior peroneal retinacula that will hold the peroneus longus and brevis tendons in place. So those are the muscles in the lateral compartment, peroneus longus and brevis. They cause evasion and inversion, and this occurs at the subtalar joint. Remember, dociflexion, plantar flexion at the ankle joint. Evasion, inversion occur at subtalar joint. So peroneus longus and brevis cause evasion. They do not cause inversion. They only cause evasion. Which is the nerve supply to muscles in the lateral compartment? Superficial peroneal nerve. And the vessel of the lateral compartment are perforating branches from anterior tibial, as well as peroneal artery that comes from posterior tibial. Both anterior and posterior tibial are branches from the popliteal artery. So this is your peroneus longus. When you remove it, you're able to see peroneus brevis below it. And you can see 
peroneus longus will cross below the foot to come to the medial aspect. This is your peroneus brevis. So peroneus longus has a very long tendon and when they contract, it's going to cause evasion. To force, face, make the plantar aspect of the foot to face laterally. That's evasion. So both muscles cause evasion. Then we go to the posterior compartment of the leg. Contains plantar flexors. Okay, they plantar flex the ankle. So they're divided into two, superficial and deep, and this is by a transverse intermuscular septum. What is the nerve of the posterior compartment? The tibial branch of sciatic nerve. And this posterior compartment is supplied by posterior tibial artery that gives peroneal artery. So these two supply posterior compartment. So the superficial portion of this posterior compartment has the triceps sori. Which muscles form the triceps sori? You have the two heads of gastrocnemius, soleus, and plantaris. What is the action of these muscles? They cause plantar flexion at the ankle joint. All of them usually insert via the calcaneal tendon onto the calcaneus. And at this portion, we have a subcutaneous calcaneal barza around this calcaneal tendon. We have what you call the soleal arc. What is soleal arc? It is a pathway at the um, soleus muscle, the lower border of soleus muscle for exit of popliteal lateral and tibial nerve. So these are your triceps, right? two heads of gastrocnemius, you have your soleus here, plantaris is usually on the lateral aspect, and you have your Achilles tendon, so you have your uh, calcaneal baza around this portion. So these are the calf muscles. Look at your soleus here. Okay, so this is your plantaris muscle towards, um, that's your plantaris muscle there, and this is your soleus after you remove the gastrocnemius. This is what you appreciate. This is your Achilles tendon or tendon calcaneus, inserting onto the calcaneal bone. That's the subcutaneous barza, okay, at the, um, where Achilles tendon inserts. This is your soleal arc, okay, above the soleus muscle, that's your soleal arc, that's where tibial nerve and popliteal vessels will enter. Okay, that's, you can appreciate that, that's your soleal arc, okay, and then that's your common peroneal nerve, this is your tibial nerve from sciatic. So the deep part of the posterior compartment has four muscles. Number one, the popliteus. Remember we said it unlocks the knee. Unlocking of the knee, again, I say, is the lateral rotation of the femur on the tibial condyles from an ex uh, uh, a fully extended position to allow um, flexion of the knee. So the rest of the muscles in the deep part of the posterior compartment, they cause plantar flexion at the ankle, and they also flex the toes. These include flexor digitorum longus will flex the digits, flexor halucius longus will flex um, the big toe and tibialis posterior muscle. So if you look here, this is your flexor halucius, this is your tibialis posterior, this flexor digitorum, they all come medially on the uh, medial aspect of the ankle in what we call the tarsal tunnel, and this uh, corresponds with the carpal tunnel in the wrist. So your popliteal artery will give anterior tibial and posterior tibial. Posterior tibial is in the posterior compartment. It gives peroneal that comes towards the lateral compartment. Posterior tibial continues in the posterior compartment, passes through tarsal tunnel, and on the plantar aspect of the foot, it divides into medial plantar to supply medial aspect of the foot, and lateral plantar to supply lateral aspect of the foot. That's your popliteal artery, and that's how it divides. So you can see both posterior tibial and your peroneal artery. Again, uh, um, Common peroneal on the head of the fibula, it winds on the neck, then gives superficial peroneal to the lateral compartment and deep peroneal to the anterior compartment. Popliteal artery divides into anterior and posterior tibial. Anterior tibial pierces interosseous membrane, comes into the anterior compartment of the leg, and at the mid malleolar point, it becomes the dorsalis pedis artery. So that's your popliteal artery. This is the posterior surface. You can appreciate the peroneal artery. Here, posterior tibial, popliteal artery gives anterior tibial pierce interosseous membrane to come into the anterior compartment, and posterior tibial gives peroneal. So both posterior tibial and peroneal are in the posterior compartment, but the peroneal gives perforators that will supply the lateral compartment of the leg. So what's the clinical relevance? Compartment syndrome, which we have already talked about, calcaneal tendinitis, inflammation of the tendon, or bursitis of the basa, foot drop, and you need to appreciate that the muscles, the triceps sura, give a muscle pump that provides a venous return. So they're able to 
um, facilitate venous return. Remember, blood 